In this video, we're going to do a little bit of ink smushing and scene building using Hero Arts products from the latest July 2024 release. Hi, this is Anna from Crafty Anna Studio. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I post paper crafting and card making tutorials. For my project today, I'll be using the clear stamp of the month from Hero Arts. This one is called Mermaids and Seahorses. You can see all the beautiful mermaids and this one I think is called a dragon seahorse. Um, and then you have like seaweed and shells. And then of course you have the coordinating frame cuts. I'll also be using the color layering fishes from the layering stencil of the month. This is a really cool stencil set that's quite versatile. We have four stencils that layer together. The first two layers are a school of big fish. And then the next two layers are a school of smaller fish. So I'm going to actually use one of these stencils for the background of my card. Then we have this stamp set that I'm going to use called Tropical Fishes. I'm going to use practically everything in the stamp set. So now I have here two panels of watercolor cardstock. And I'm going to use this reactive ink palette that came in the card kit of the month and this reactive ink cube called Splash. So first I'm going to smush down the first two colors in the reactive ink palette. This is sort of like an aqua blue. And then I'm going to spritz it with water. Then I'm going to take one of the panels and just smush it down onto the ink. I'm just going to use my tips of my fingers just to press it down gently onto the watered down ink. I'm just going to continue doing this and you can see how it looks like waves or, you know, it looks almost like it's very sea-like. I'm going to spritz more water just to activate the inks once again and just continue smushing it down. Then I will clean off my mat and I'm going to pull out my heat gun and heat set the inks. I just want to make sure that these inks are dry before I add the next layer of color. And once it's dry, I'm going to take this reactive ink cube, just splash, and I'm just going to pounce it all over my craft mat. Then I'm going to spritz it once again with water. I'm also going to lightly mist one of the panels just to activate the inks a little bit. So it blends very nicely together. So I'll continue pouncing it on the mat and try to fill in the white spaces. I'll continue doing this until I'm satisfied with the layering. I'll also take the big panel and do, do the same thing. Sometimes I'm quite impatient to fill in those little white gaps. So I just take my paintbrush and I just take some of the ink that's on the mat and just paint over those. I will also use the paintbrush to flick some ink onto the panel. This will just add extra interest to the background. Then once again, I'll take my heat tool and dry off the panel. I wanted also to mention that even if you don't have reactive inks, you can use Distress Oxide inks or Distress inks, any inks that's, that react with water. Because this process is quite messy and my fingers get a little inky, I try to do several panels all at once. And then I just keep them in my stash for future use. So I take the biggest panel and I'm going to cut it to four and a quarter by five and a half. Then I'm going to take one of the rectangle dies from the infinity die set and cut out a frame. This frame will be the top layer of my card. Then for the second layer of my 3D scene card, I will use this vellum, which came in the Hero Arts card kit of the month. I will cut this down to four and a quarter by five and a half. Then I will take this window die set, also from Hero Arts, it's called swirling tide border die and I will cut this out off camera. So this is what it looks like all die cut out. 
I will now check to see how it looks like at the back of the frame that I had die cut out earlier. Before I assemble my 3D scene, I'm going to use this blue embossing powder to add a little bit of shine to my card. So I'm going to take a small Versamark ink pad and I'm just going to swipe it on the inside of the frame and also on the swirling tides border. And I'm going to sprinkle it generously with this blue pearl embossing powder and then heat set it. This blue pearl embossing powder came from another My Monthly Hero kit. If you don't have this kind of blue embossing powder, you can use glitter embossing powder or you can also use a holographic embossing powder or you don't have to use it at all. This is entirely optional. So now I'm going to stamp out the images for my card. I'm going to take the seaweed um, from the Mermaids and Seahorses stamp set and also one of the shells and then I'm going to use practically every stamp in this Tropical Fish stamp set. And I'm just going to lay it out on one of the panels that I had ink smooshed earlier. After laying it all out, I'm going to close the door of my Misty and pick up the stamp. Then I'm going to apply anti-static powder onto the paddle and then stamp it generously with Versamark ink. I make sure to give it a really good press because this panel is textured. And then after that, I'm going to sprinkle emboss white embossing powder onto the panel and then heat set it with my heat tool. I always use this heat embossing technique if I don't feel like coloring in all the images. I think this is just perfect if you're not really into coloring every single detail in your stamps. After heat setting it, I'm going to set that aside while I work on the background of my card. I'm going to use this stencil number three, which is uh, a school of small fish, and I'm going to ink blend it all over the panel. Of course, I forgot to turn my camera on while I was ink blending, but it was pretty straightforward. I just used the aqua inks that came in the reactive ink palette. Off camera, I die cut all the elements that I need to build my scene. I also have two panels of acetate cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And of course I have the frames and the background. So I'm going to show you the process of how I build up my scene. Whenever I create a multi-layer scene, I always start with the bigger and taller elements at the back. And then, as I move forward, I use the smaller and smaller elements. So first I put one of the big corals on the right side, and then the seaweed on the left, and one of the fish. And then I'm going to layer, on the second layer, I'm going to add a sea anemone right behind that big, I think it's called a coral fan and then another coral on the left side, and then an angelfish on the right. And then I'm gonna add the top layer, and then probably put additional elements at the bottom. So the stone with seaweed, then the seashell, and the starfish right in the middle. But then I noticed in my scene that there was something lacking at the top. So I wanted to add another fish in the second layer. And this is why it's so important to kind of like not finalize until you are really happy with the way things are layered. So I removed the top layer and then I'm going to add this little fish at the top left. Then I'm going to arrange all the other elements like this rock with seaweed, the starfish and the shell and a fish right at the top of the border and this little fish at the bottom. Then I'll bring out the stamp set and choose a sentiment that will fit right at that spot. And I chose this one, You're Fantastic. I will heat emboss it with white embossing powder and heat set it before I start to assemble the card. So I will start assembling from the bottom layer moving my way up. I will attach this to a side folding card base. So after adhering the base layer onto the side folding 
note card, I'm going to start gluing down all the elements. I start with the bottom layer. I'm just going to add glue and start laying down all the elements that I want to be at the back of the scene. Then I will add some aqua iridescent bubbles. Off camera, I've already adhered one eighth of an inch double sided tape at the back of the vellum window, and then I'm going to adhere it on top of the acetate sheet. This acetate sheet is essential in creating these 3D scenes because the elements will have something to adhere to as well as provide stability. Then I'm going to lay it down on the card and glue the elements onto it. This is really one of my favorite techniques in building up a 3D scene. I really love the effect and I love that you can even turn this into shaker cards. As you watch me glue down all the elements onto the card, I would just like to take this opportunity to ask a question, or maybe several questions, and I hope you can answer me in the comments below. So what would you like to see from my tutorials or my uploads onto my YouTube channel? Would you like to see more of this technique-based videos? Because really that's all I ever post but I have other things that I can post too for example storage solutions for craft rooms or I could also uh, show you some other kinds of projects like I I actually like to watercolor um, and do gouache I can show that too I also like um, to do journaling or at least not not journaling per se but making journals out of, uh, let's say, cereal boxes. I like to upcycle things for use. That's one of my passions that I do on the side. I just don't post it on this channel because, well, I don't know if anyone is interested in seeing those kinds of projects as this channel has actually been mostly card making. But moving on in the future for more content, I would really like to ask if that is something you'd be interested in seeing or if there's anything else you want me to, sh to show in my channel. For example, I could show card sharing, which means not really a technique-based video, but more of a video of all the cards I had made, for example, uh, using a particular stamp set or uh, my, a bunch of Christmas cards or how I actually use, um, you know, uh, recycled objects in my cards, you know, things like that. So, let me know in the comments below. I would so appreciate it. Oh, and also, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. Now back to the card. After I've glued down all the elements, added the baubles, and also the frames onto the acetate sheet, I added foam tape to the back of each frame, and I'm now layering them one by one right on top of each other. So I started with the middle and then now I'm doing the top. As you can see, I use the side of the frame to align each layer. And that's it. That's my card project for today. I also wanted to show you another card I made, which is very similar. This time I used uh, the two layers of the wave um, window die and I added more elements. Now some of these elements came from an old stamp set from Hero Arts called Need a Hand. I took the jellyfish and some of the elements and glued them down using the same technique. If you're interested in any of the products I used in the video, I have them all linked below. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, bye!